Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute inaugurates the 11-story house to host offices of the General Directorate of Taxation as the staff look forward with optimism to how the new edifice will ease work for them. 65 artists from different disciplines have been decorated with medals for their selflessness in promoting Cameroonian arts and culture at home and abroad. Plus, the Minister of Finance has been presenting the different envelopes allocated to some sovereign administrations like the Presidency, the Ministry of Finance and its own ministry. Good evening and welcome to the 730 News. I am Ben and Bumagana. I am in Yaoundé. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Twenty seventh of November, once again welcome. The Director General of Taxation has a new ultra modern building located at the heart of Yaoundé with two hundred offices that can host six hundred workers. While inaugurating the structure today, Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute invited the staff of the Director General of Taxation to be more committed and efficient as they raise revenue for the state in the new conducive environment. Details with Star Building correspondent Christian Che Atam. The new structure to host the Directorate General of Taxation is a modern edifice made up of two conjoined buildings. The main building is made up of a high raise of 11 stories. The new complex has some 200 offices and can host 600 workers. It provides an adequate environment for the Directorate General of Taxation to regroup its services, which were scattered in different parts of Yaoundé. The city mayor of Yaoundé, Luc Atanganamasi, hailed the new jewel. He says it has come to add beauty to the Yaoundé landscape. The Minister of Finance, Louis-Paul Moutazé, said the building represents the dedication of the administration to the modernization of public infrastructures in Cameroon. Prime Minister Joseph Dionkuti, who officially inaugurated the structure, said it is the result of the modernization drive of public service administrations in the country. By providing the Director General of Taxation with a new building, government is demonstrating the attention it pays to public finances. The Director General of Taxation has a key role to play. It contributes over 60% of state revenue and maintains a major player in the mobilization of resources. The Prime Minister Head of Government has invited other departments to copy the example of the Taxation Administration. He has equally invited the Yaoundé City Mayor to work towards improving sanitation around the capital city. The newly inaugurated 11-story house hosting ed offices of the Director General of Taxation will enable officials to better coordinate their activities and reduce the day-to-day -day stress observed in handling uh, issues related to taxes. After today's inauguration of the building, CRTV's Luma Slim Davis was part of the guided tour of the house. Here is his report. This is the new building of the Directorate General of Taxation an 11-story building with three underground apartments built on a surface area of 19,821 square meters hosting 200 offices to accommodate 600 personnel. With this new building, my colleagues and I are going to do better in the mobilization of uh, uh, the revenue for our country and to improve the quality of service rendered to our taxpayers and our contributors. The structure has 10 meeting rooms spread over eight floors and an ultra-modern conference facility with a capacity of 200 sitting places. 
I'm so impressed with the, the speed of the construction. The director uh, would be very proud of the, the achievement that this is and what it means for the modernization of the tax administration. Um, I hope that the citizens, also um, taxpayers of Cameroon, see the integrity of their of their tax administration um, and what this build building symbolizes in terms of the modernization of their tax system. There is a data center of international standards, a restaurant, a keep fit room, and a multimedia center with innovative security technology, amongst others. Cameroon's cultural and artistic diversity must be seen as a source of national pride as well as an instrument to project the country's image abroad. The statement was made today by Prime Minister Joseph Dion Gute, representative of the head of state as he officially opened the first edition of the Cameroon Artistic and Cultural Resilience Days in Yaoundé. Let's get back to meet Star Building correspondent Christian Cheatam. The first edition of the Cameroon Artistic and Cultural Resilience Days brought together artists and actors of the cultural landscape from all over Cameroon to highlight the role arts and culture play for the economic development and social cohesion of Cameroon. The Minister of Arts and Culture, Bidung Pat, said the subsector is an important driver of economic development. He regretted that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the sector negatively and has called for all to contribute towards its revival. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, personal representative of the head of state, congratulated artists on their contribution towards national unity all through the years. Many artists were decorated in the course of the ceremony as recognition of their input. In presiding over this ceremony as the personal representative of the head of state, I would like to extend my warm congratulations to the artists who are receiving the recognition of the nation. These distinctions are a source of pride for you and for your respective families because they are acquired at the price of constant work. It is also a call for you to keep working hard. The first edition of the Cameroon Artistic and Cultural Resilience Days is meant to provide an added boost to the arts and culture subsector and consolidate its place as a main driver of economic development in Cameroon. Still talking about these resilient days, 65 Cameroonians of all artistic disciplines in Cameroon and from the different regions of the country have received medals for their selfless work to promote arts and culture in and out of the country. The highest distinction was the commander of the National Order of Valor, Johan Rinjo, and others like the Knight of the Order of Valor was given to Ate Francis Ngong. Aka Ate Bazo. The artists all thank the government of Cameroon for the medals and promise to work harder to promote the culture of Cameroon. Constantine Baum reports. Recognizing the hard work of actors of all artistic disciplines from all over the national territory demonstrates the interest of the state in the promotion of creativity in the artistic world. This ceremony to honor 65 of them is amongst the many new measures artists are beginning to benefit. It goes to help in building our nation and when the nation recognizes it, you can only be proud. I thank the head of state president Paul Bia who has recognized our contribution in promoting creativity and building the music industry. It's a recognition of a lot of hard work that we've put in and it's also a call to action that we need to put in more. I realize that there are too many categories and I think I want to get to the top. Harin Jonjo got the highest distinction decorated as commander of the National Order of Valor. Chris Nickel led to the list of eight persons with officer of the National Order of Valor. Be it officer or knight, it was a great day for all of them. Phase two of the ceremony was a celebration of Ebogu Emerang Ange, decorated as Grand Cordon. He is an icon of Bikutsi, who from 1969 till date has continued to bring up new talents. The ceremony also witnessed the special bass guitar of Tumba Mika being handed to Cameroon's National Museum by the sister Alice Mika. 
Let's get over to the National Assembly where the first part of the finance bill for the 2021 fiscal year, which focuses on the general conditions for the budgetary and financial balance of the state, has been presented at the National Assembly. Finance Minister Louis Paul Motazé, sitting before members of the Committee on Finance and the Budget, outlined the new tax and customs reforms and expenditure ceilings of the 4,865 billion CFA francs budget. Esther Kima has the details. To contain the coronavirus pandemic and to mitigate its impacts, the state has drafted a finance bill that guarantees the rebound of economic activity. To attain the 3.3% growth rate expected in 2021 and to take the overall budget deficit from 4.5% in 2020 to 2.8% 2 next year, Finance Minister Louis Paul Motaze underscored that a fiscal policy which concedes a set of exemptions to support enterprises are proposed. These include the reduction of the tax burden for small and medium-sized enterprises from 30 to 28 percent, the suspension of tourist tax and the discharge of corporate tax for the hotel sector badly hit by COVID-19, as well as the cancellation of the axle tax for the benefits of transporters. The carry-forward period for tax losses has also been extended by one year. To promote import substitution, equipment and inputs meant for agriculture, fisheries, livestock, and the pharmaceutical industry will benefit from value-added tax exonerations in 2021. Regarding revenue security, electronic payment of taxes and duties for large companies will be compulsory in the computerized divisional taxation centers. With the planned reorganization of mechanisms to protect taxpayers' rights, the state hopes to better the social climate and business environment in Cameroon. Hearings of litigations linked to the December 6 regional council elections have begun at the Supreme Court. Different political parties and traditional rulers who submitted over 24 petitions are calling for the rejection of the list of some candidates published by Elecam in different constituencies. Sidoni Jokmandi says the audience was presided over by the president of the administrative bench of the Supreme Court, Daniel Etekin Dumbe. Here is her report. After verdict pronounced by different administrative courts nationwide, 24 petitions with regard to pre-electoral litigations for the regional council election have been submitted at the administrative bench of the Supreme Court. Among the petitions examined today by members of the administrative bench, a CPDM candidate in the FACO constituency has not presented credible documents to Elecam for his candidacy. We have discovered that Mr. Mbela Etoga uh, has produced a false documents. The lawyers of the CPDM have argued against accusations made at the level of the administrative bench of the Supreme Court. Raised four grounds of appeal, you know, to show that that judgment was not uh, a proper judgment and should be quashed. Uh, Elecam which says that they don't know him in the electoral registry. Yet, no document was tendered by Elecam to show that his documents were false. At the time of these reports, the hearings were still ongoing and no verdict had been passed. We'll be there for waiting to hear the different verdicts handed out so far. Defense and security forces have concluded a joint search operation to clear all suspected individuals in Kumba Town in the southwest region in the wake of gruesome school killings and other atrocities committed in that town. The operation was carried out by the Army, the Gendarmerie and police forces to ensure that normalcy returns to Kumba. Details with Guy Roger Nana from CRTV Southwest in Kumba. This joint routine military operation conducted by the Gendarmerie Legion Commander Colonel Chinda Mbuzike Henri and the commander of the Motorized Infantry Brigade Colonel Severin Eyenga also saw the participation of the police force in Kumba. We do such a mission uh, in Kumba, in Boya, 
in Limbe. Such a connection permit us to know, to verify, to check, and uh, finally to discover terrorists who live among the population. All suspected threats to the calmness that reigns in Kumba at the moment were forestalled. We have uh, arrested uh, 142 persons here, 12 without uh, national identity card. Those uh, between uh, these uh, people that have been arrested who have something to deal with terrorists will be transferred to the court. The forces on the ground were equally motivated and reminded on the important role they play in bringing back tranquility to the town of Kumba, which is a major junction that leads to several other parts of the southwest region. Now let's cross over to the northwest region where the governor has warned that no individual or individuals in the region are authorized to manufacture and sell weapons. Adolf Lele Lafrik issued the warning during a seminar organized by the Ministry of External Relations. In the seminar, he noted that the crisis in the northwest is still dragging on largely due to the illegal manufacturing and sale of illegal weapons. Kilo Valeri reports from Sierra TV Northwest in Bamenda. The Northwest region is proliferated with arms. Several military operations uncover these weapons, which authorities insist have been illegally owned by the opposing protagonist in the crisis. It is only specialized institutions that have the right to start fabricating guns, weapons. At the conflict in front stage, their production and circulation were banned by the region's administrative authorities, who admit at this Bamenda anti arms proliferation event that the persistence of the unrest signals meet success. Traditional rulers who are expected to read cultural event of gunshot talk of moves in this direction. Officials of the Bamenda Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Center point to over 150 ex-separatist fighters who've dropped their weapons and lodged here. But by Northwest crisis standard, it is still a long journey to completely purge the region from arms proliferation. The Cameroon private sector has uh, been encouraged to invest in the road and infrastructural development sector as a booster for growth and wealth creation. The invitation was extended to the private sector today by the Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Nganun Jumesi, during a meeting with members of the Cameroon Employers Union, JICAM. Joyce Kimbi Fawadju reports. The contribution of the private sector in the development of the road infrastructure an incontestable measure for the economic growth and wealth creation. And it is what mounted the state engineer on Shikam's rostrum. Minister Nganu emphasizes on the strategy to increase road linear through alternative material to stabilize the soil. I have requested the private sector to invest in that by creating companies to fabricate those alternative materials. Those who cannot be fabricated in, the, in Cameroon could be imported and make, made available in our local market. The private sector, while hoping to move from subcontracting to core contractors, said they are ready to give a try to this innovation. Getting quarries in all regions such that stones can be produced, sand can be produced. If all this material is produced, then we will we'll not, we'll not only be tiring roads, we'll be doing concrete roads, which are stronger. That is what he's talking about. However, other constraints and challenges were handled in the question and answer that concluded Minister Nganu's meeting with the interpatronal groupings of Cameroon in Douala. The 18th general, the 18th ordinary session of the Summit of Heads of States and Governments of the Economic Commission of Central African States, ECAS, has ended in Libreville, Gabon, with a strong emphasis on physical integration and the effective execution of the integrative projects. President Denis Sasungesu of Congo takes over the chairman's seat from Gabonese President Ali Bongo Odimba. Let's get more from Caroline Oke and Noma. As I pass the torch to my brother, President Denis Sasungesu, I'm delighted to announce that 10 of the 11 states of our community have ratified the revised treaty. The ratification of the 11 member state is already well advanced. Those were the words of the outgoing chairperson of ACAS during the 18th ordinary session of the Heads of States and Government Summit today in Libreville, Gabon. 
Taking over his predecessor, President Denis Sassungesu, reminded the member states of the commission that they have no choice but to privilege concerted initiatives and efforts over hostilities plaguing the socio-economic growth of the sub-region. He, however, promised to continue with the institutional reform program, peace and security. Other issues such as the salary scale and payroll of employees were on the limelight of the summit. Let's get back to Baminda. This time, the Northwest Agency for the Promotion of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises says the livestock, fisheries and agribusiness sectors in the country or in the region are badly hit by unemployment. Many businesses in the sector have folded on an account of the sociopolitical crisis. As such, 40 entrepreneurs are currently undergoing a training on ways to survive in business in spite of the challenging context. Ola Titanki reports from Baminda. The role of these 40 entrepreneurs is to follow up already existing businesses to ensure its sustainability and to coach young entrepreneurs on their business ideas. Statistics from the Northwest Regional Delegation of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises indicate that since 2011, more than 2,321 enterprises have been set up under the one stop shop, but the socio political crisis and the the health crisis COVID-19 have caused several of them to fold up. The Agency for the Promotion of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, with its new program dubbed Start and Improve Your Business, is expected to revamp the business atmosphere in the region. We want to have locally based experts on the ground who can serve as coaching. Business coaching is extremely very important for business to work. The program in its pilot phase will run till 2022, targeting 1,000 entrepreneurs in each region. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. Let's now cut into the second canto and talk about our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The government of Cameroon has reiterated the need for Cameroonians to continue respecting outlined barrier measures against COVID-19 so as to avoid a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic in the country. Health experts have insisted that one of the ways through which the virus can be spread again is through Cameroon's borders. For the measures taken to hold the spread, let's meet Baldwin Sama von Cayman at the Public Health Emergency Center with his guest, Dr. Eric Tandy, for updates. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Benin Bumagana. The scare is obvious. The worry is telling, telling signs of how an entire nation is looking forward to continue avoiding a possibility of uh, Cameroon embracing a second wave of the pandemic. And if that happens, it means that uh, uh, some measures have not been respected. What are just some of these measures put in place at the level of Cameroon's entry post to avoid a possibility of a second wave of uh, this coronavirus pandemic? We discussed that tonight with our guest, Dr. Eric Tanzi. He is a public health expert. Good evening to you, Doctor. Yeah, good evening, Bordin. Explain to us some of these key measures put in place at the level of for the different entry posts in the country, into the country to avoid any possibility of a second wave of the pandemic. Yeah, Bordin, as you know, ever since uh, the beginning of COVID-19 in March, measures were taken. And one of the principal measures concerned the entry points, air, sea, and by road. And the main points that were elaborated here is to curb or to avoid the spread of COVID-19. Just to emphasize that in addition to verifying the PCR the tests that have been requested, that each and everyone entering into the territory of Cameroon should present, the government has taken decision to test 
everyone that is entering, because like you must have uh, realized that uh, a lot of fake results came in. So the policy of the government for testing everyone is to reassure that we should not uh, be embarrassed again with uh, the new wave like we noticed in, in, in March. And again, uh, to emphasize here that beside the screening at the port of entry, there is a follow-up of all passengers that enter Cameroon so that we should not have an embarrassment or the spread because you know the incubation period lasts for close to 14 days. So based on this follow-up, we are able to curb and contain so that we should not be afraid of having the second wave. But if barrier measures and advice are not respected, then we might be embarrassed to see it in our community. So we must be very careful to respect and follow government measures. Thank you so much, Dr. Eric Tanzi. Government measures must be scrupulously respected by all and sundry for us to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. And thank you, Baldwin Sama von Cayman. Please take good care of yourself. Let's go to church now. Christians of Iglese Presbyterian G. Cameroon Yaoundé have observed a three-day fasting and prayer time before God at their parish in Mesa 2 here in Yaoundé. They prayed for peace in Cameroon and for the families of those who lost kids in the Kumba massacre. Let's hear more from Onela Menjana. <laughs> It was with songs of worship and praise that the Presbyterian Church of Cameroon ended a three-day prayer and fasting program. This was organized following the Kumba massacre that took place at the Mother Francisca School on October 24, 2020. What we have done is that we want to pray God to give in his hands the population of North and Southwest because of all, bad, all things they have been done for that young boys, that children. During the service, prayers of exaltation imploring God's mercy in Cameroon were said by the different pastors. We have prayed our Lord to help our country and uh, to we, we have a compassion for the families who are in uh, crisis. The reverend pastors prayed and hope a solution will be found for peace to reign back in the country. The sum of 24 million CFA francs has been shared out to 15 Cameroonian young entrepreneurs to enable them complete their projects and create more wealth. The initiative is the outcome of bilateral ties between the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Civic Education and the Conference of Youth and Sports Ministers of La Francophonie, Dopt Confeges. Let's listen to some of the beneficiaries. That is Cynthia Endam speaking to our reporter Romeo Kenyi. With this money, I will be able to open a bigger place for my institute. Uh, with this money, I will get some equipment which I, I couldn't afford on my own and possibly create employment for those that need it. I guess focus and my determination because uh, it took me patience to get here. The regular power cuts experienced in the three northern regions will soon be reduced thanks to the 20 or thanks to 20 megawatts of energy gotten from the grid at Hahala in Gyaoundé to be distributed to Adamawa and the northern regions, being the Lakdo Dam, because the Lakdo Dam uh, lacks water to produce enough energy. This was revealed during a visit to uh, the Lakdo Dam and are the plans at the Jambutu neighborhood of Garwa, led by the Chief Generation Officer of NAO Cameroon, Lisley Langsi She Bienka. Vanessa Woodnangs Namung reports. The current shortage of water in the Lagdo Dam due to the lack of rainfall accounts for the recent insufficient energy supply. In this part of the country, this thermal plant that has a production capacity of 72 megawatts of energy is only 48% full of water as compared to 105% last year at the same period, thus being able to produce only 20 megawatts of energy, a situation that greatly impacts activities around River Benway, which provides water to the Lac de Dam. The crisis of energy supply that we're having up in the north of the country for the three regions in the north, that's Adamawa, north and far north, 
are due to a hydrology problem. Climate change is real. We had far less than less water than we expected. We had only 48% of the amount of water we were expecting to have at this point in time. So that is why the Lagdo plant cannot produce the amount of energy that it is normally supposed to be producing at this point in time. Introducing an additional 20 megawatts thermal capacity to be distributed between the towns of Ngaundere and Garwa is among other solutions put in place by NAO Cameroon to reduce the regular blackouts. The general manager of ENEO has worked out with the government is to transfer 20 megawatts of thermal capacity from Ahala in Yaoundé up to Jambutu in the north and Gaoundere in Adamawa. So 12 megawatts will go to increase the capacity in Jambutu and 8 megawatts will go to to Ngaundere. An increment by Eneo Cameron that seeks to satisfy the increasing demand in electricity supply for the well-being of their customers. Thank you very much, uh, Vanessa Wutnang Snamong. Putting an end to this edition of the news. The next edition of the news will be coming to you at 8.30 with Lucrest Bedu Jemba. And then uh, you will get the campaign news with Gladys Tata and Nicole Dudu. I'll be back here tomorrow for the 7.30 News. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. C'est Artivinius, ici, toute l'info.